into North Israel, which once looked like this, turn into this. Today, I am taking you into Israel's northern war front. Since October 2023, most of the war has taken place in southern Israel and Gaza. But the northern front of the war shouldn't be taken any less seriously. Israel borders four countries, with Syria and Lebanon to the north. And Hezbollah, a Lebanese militant group and designated terror organization, could be preparing for an October 7th-style invasion or worse in the region. You see, Hezbollah in many ways poses a much stronger threat to Israel than Hamas and Gaza. Hamas operates as a guerrilla-style force. However, Hezbollah is not quite the same. They operate more like an army, with weapons and equipment Hamas would only dream of having. But now we are here to answer some burning questions. What is Hezbollah's ultimate endgame, and what kind of destruction have they already unleashed upon northern Israel? Today, we are guests of Israel's police, who are going to be showing us around one of Israel's border cities, Kiryat Shmona. This city, which once had a population of around 35,000, is now a ghost town. Most of the residents have evacuated, but a few choose to stay. Meanwhile, Lebanon lies just over the mountain you see now. The officers joining us all come from incredibly diverse backgrounds. A Jewish officer whose parents immigrated from India, an Arab Christian, and a Circassian. Together, they all work towards the same mission, to be protectors of their city. שמי אייבן, אני במשטרה מזה 24 שנים. ההורים שלי נולדו בהודו, אני יליד ישראל. לפני השביעי לאוקטובר למעשה אנחנו משטרה קלאסית. אחרי השביעי לאוקטובר למעשה אנחנו צריכים להחליף גם אצלנו בראש רגע צורת חשיבה. מוכנים לכל תרחיש שהוא מאוד מלחמתי ופחות שיטור, שאנחנו נשארים לשמור על הבית. Police officers in Israel do more than enforce law. They serve as a vital line of defense in the event of an invasion. Currently, the officers are occupied with responding to the relentless rocket attacks launched from Lebanon by Hezbollah. Rocket sirens, billows of smoke, and destroyed homes are all too common of a sight here. And now we are on our way to visit one of those homes. The officers ask permission from the owners before entering the property. פה בבית עצמו, כפי שאתם רואים, פגעו אה, שלושה אה, טילים, כאשר בתוך הבית היה אדם, אדם אה, מבוגר בגילו, שסירב בכל תוקף לעזוב את העיר קריית שמונה מתוך אידיאולוגיה, זה אני אומר לך ברמה האישית, שהוא אה, היה בבית בזמן הפגיעה, אה, בנס, הוא נפגע קלות מאוד. But this car belonged to a family. This was supposed to be their safe place. There's damage from some of the shrapnel, which are the metal pieces that come off of the rocket when it explodes. Here you can just smell the stench of the rotting food that was just left here. So how do rocket attacks like the one that happened here further the military goals of Hezbollah? Since its founding, one of Hezbollah's main objectives has been the destruction of the state of Israel. Hezbollah's 1985 manifesto in Arabic can be translated to say, our struggle will end only when this entity, Israel, is obliterated. So when Hamas invaded Israel in October 2023, despite their fundamentally different beliefs, Hamas being a Sunni group and Hezbollah Shiite, they agreed on one thing, that Israel must be destroyed. But generally speaking, it doesn't seem that Hezbollah wants a full-blown war with Israel. And we'll get into why that is soon. What's happened in this home that we are standing in? There were a lot of rockets here. There were a lot of rockets. One of the rockets, two rockets, were hit in this house. As a result of that, this house was destroyed. For the sake of us, there was no one here. There was no one who was injured in this house. And if there were people in this home, what would have happened to them? I think they were not in life. There were two rockets that hit this home, and one of them hits right here. The family has been away from their home for almost a whole year. And you can just see the bills 
burned books. You can still see their clothing, their jeans burned. Everything left exactly as it was when the rockets hit. Hezbollah rocket attacks have been notoriously deadly, especially following the assault on Majd al-Shams. In July 2024, a group of Druze children, an Arabic-speaking ethno-religious minority, were playing football outside when the rocket sirens suddenly sounded. According to residents, the warning siren only gave a few seconds notice before a rocket struck the field, leaving no time for the children to seek shelter. The attack tragically claimed the lives of 12 children. The incident shocked and outraged Israelis nationwide, prompting Israel to retaliate. This led to the assassination of Hezbollah commander Fouad Shakur. We have to escape out of here fast. We were just alerted by Israeli intelligence that there is about to be an attack, so we must evacuate. I told you in the safety briefing, sometimes we're lucky enough to get alerts. This is one of those times, so we have to stop the filming for a minute. We're going to bring you into the protected areas. And uh, after we hear the alerts, we'll wait a little bit, and, uh, and then we can continue. And this is the reality of the thousands that have stayed behind. Exactly. So right now, the officers are waiting. As soon as we get an indication that there was an explosion inside the city, the officers are going to run to the impact site, because we need to see if there was somebody who may have been injured. It's fascinating to see how the residents have taken these spaces and, and brightened them up, places that may seem dark, you know, a place where you come to, to hide from an attack. You can see just how active this war zone is. Now is a good time to come back to the question, why does Hezbollah avoid a full-blown war with Israel? Because as of now, the conflict is contained to back and forth strikes. First, it's to protect Lebanon's political and economic stability, as another conflict could devastate the already fragile country. The group also recognizes Israel's military superiority and, under Iran's influence, serves as a proxy to maintain a deterrence strategy. Hezbollah uses their arsenal to threaten Israel and act as a bargaining chip rather than provoke a full-scale conflict. Finally, remember that Hezbollah is part of Lebanon's political system, even holding seats in parliament. They need to keep their support base strong and be careful about not starting a war that could weaken their position. Well, I can't answer on behalf of Hezbollah, but what I can tell you is the reality of what's on the ground and what we see. We see that while Israel is targeting terror infrastructure, where they're firing rockets from to hit here into Israel, Hamas, Hezbollah, these ter interchangeable, internationally recognized terror organizations are doing one thing. They're targeting civilian homes. And that's what we've seen today. And unfortunately, that's the reality. And our police are going to continue doing whatever it takes to be there to respond to these impact sites so that we can defend, protect, and serve our citizens. There doesn't seem to be an end in sight for this conflict, leaving families uncertain about when they can return to their homes, if they even have one to return to. At least with officers like these protecting their cities, the residents who choose to stay have some support to help them ride out the war. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.